Hello everyone, I welcome all of my viewers to a new video. In this video, we are going to tackle a vulnerable machine with a difficulty level easy. You have to download the OVA image from Vulnhub. If you have not yet familiar with this Vulnhub, then watch out for my previous videos. Once you had downloaded it, you needed to set up the server. It is pretty easy to set up the server within VirtualBox. Launch VirtualBox. Click on Tools and then click on Import and import the OVA file. Once you are done with these, click on setting and change the network adapter to the host only adapter. Make sure your Kali Linux machine, from where you perform an attack, and your vulnerable machine are in the same network. Once you are done with settings up, let's start the virtual machines. As you can notice, the vulnerable machine is ready which prompts us to input the credentials. Enumeration Our first step is to identify the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. Open a terminal and run NetDiscover-i, and then specify the network interface name, which is ETH1. From the scan result, we have obtained our target IP address, which is 192.168.162.7. So, let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open. Scanning the network is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous NMAP tool. Where hyphen SC is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts, and hyphen SV enables version detection, which will detect what versions are running on what port. And hyphen P hyphen is used to select all ports. From the network scanning, we have spotted two open ports. Port 22 TCP running an SSH service, which means, that if you have a valid credential, then it will be easy to gain login access to the server. Port 80 TCP running an HTTP service, which indicates that there is some vulnerable website being hosted. So let's take a look at the web content running on port 80. To look at the contents ourselves, we can open a web browser of our choice, and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. Upon navigating the web page, we find out that Pylington is a cloud platform used to run and execute Python 3 programming codes. If scroll down, then you can notice a message which indicates us to click the sign up button on the menu bar at the top of the window. Upon clicking on the sign up button, it will show us in another message that will notify us that there is an error with sign up. It means we can't sign up. But if there we have a login ID and a password, then we can easily log into the server. From the nmap scanning, we have discovered that the robots.txt file exists. From robots.txt, we find out a file that contains a disallow directive. Disallow directive means you can tell search engines not to access certain files, pages, or sections of your website. This file contains a username and a password. Now we have a username and a password, so let's try to log into the server. Here click on Welcome Back Steve. 
Upon logging into the server, we serve with a Python IDE. As per the information available on the screen, we can run the Python program through the input section, and the output will be shown below on the screen. The Python program is limited to nine lines of code. So, we have to research to get a reverse shell Python program that will help me foothold the server. Foothold On searching on Google, I got a cheat sheet that will help for getting the reverse shell. Search for Python, where you can notice a few lines of code. Copy the second one and paste it to the Python IDE of Pilington Cloud. Remove Python-C. Python-C is used when you are executing the Python program through the shell. Now edit your listening host IP address and listening port. If you don't know your IP then you can find it by running the ifconfig command. Before clicking the run command, we have to start the listener using netcat. Now click on run. Upon running the program, the security automatically detects it as a malicious program. Let's try again by removing the quotation mark. It is also not working. After analyzing the instruction once again, I found a hint. If we run an EXEC along with the malicious program, then there will be a chance of bypassing the server. EXEC is a functionality of an operating system that runs an executable file in the context of an already existing process, replacing the previous executable. This act is also referred to as an overlay. It is especially important in Unix-like systems, although it exists elsewhere. So cut the lines of codes and paste them to stand input. Now in the program section write a simple program and call it through exec. Now click on run. As you can notice, I got a reverse shell. Let's make it a fully interactive shell. Let me find out the user flag. Usually, the user flag is stored within the home directory of the user directory. Let me change the directory to the home directory. There is only one directory listed, which means the username is py. Now change the directory to py and list the files and directories. And here is the user flag. Let me read it using the cat command. The permission was denied, which means we must have to switch to the user, py, to access the user flag. But not have any password to switch the user, py. Maybe the password is stored within the password.txt file. Still, we can't access it. Let's analyze other files and directories. After analyzing the listed files and directories, I found that typing.cc contains some helpful information. That may help us log into the user py because the .cc is a default extension generated after compiling any program with the help of the GNU GCC compiler. Let me have a look at this file using the cat command. Let me analyze this program code. After analyzing, I found that the typing is a Python application programmed to access the password.txt file. So, let me run the program. Now type the text and hit enter to get the password. Now, we have the password and the username, so that we can perform an SSH connection using the SSH client tool. Open a terminal and run ssh the username py and then mention the IP address of the server. As we are now logged in with the user py, so that, we can easily read the user flag. 
Now we have user access, but do not have the highest privilege access. Privilege Escalation Upon analyzing the files and directory, we found that the secret staff directory contains a Python application. Let me read the .cc file. These lines of code say to input lines of text which will store on a string container named as line, which will then save to this directory. There is an if statement, which verifies whether the directory name is written properly or not. It seems to be like, there will be a chance of path traversal vulnerability. A path traversal vulnerability allows an attacker to access files on the server to which they should not have access. They do this by tricking either the web server or the web application running on it into returning files that exist outside of the webroot folder. So, let's test this Python program to prove my assumption. The line of the text will be TechnoScience. The text will be stored in the etc slash password file. Let me verify if the line of text is written to the password file. It means we can generate a new user having the highest privilege with the help of this vulnerability. So we have to generate a salted hash using OpenSSL. Here Technoscience is the user and password is the password for the same user. Now copy this hash to text editor. Copy the root text in the password file and paste it to the text editor. Instead of the user root, edited with the username used while salting in the OpenSSL command line utility. Instead of x, just add the generated salted hash. Now, copy this newly created text. Now, run the backup program. Now, paste it here. As you can notice, we have successfully added a new user to the password file. Let's switch to the newly created user using su command. Now, we have the highest user privilege, so that, we can now read the root flag. If you have any doubts or queries, then write me a comment in my comment section.